Right, so let's look at another example of creating low-res objects for games. Let's open up an example scene here. And the one that we're going to open up is called uh, Example Broken Wall. All right, so what we basically have is this object here. Uh, what you can see is just a simple object with a texture, a very high-res texture on it. And in this case, the object does have some modeling into it. If I look at the wireframe, we can actually see that the object has been chipped into, geometry has been created for it. All right. So let's see how to create uh, something like this. All right, so pretty simple. Uh, very similar technique to before. Let's go ahead and create a plane. And I want this plane to be square in this case, so I'm going to hold down control when I do that. And for the subdivisions, uh, 4 and 4 looks pretty good. Let me open up my transform type in. I'm going to place it at 0 and 0. I'm going to rotate this guy about maybe 90 degrees, something like that. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, let me get rid of that. And uh, let me take this guy here, and I'm going to hide it. So hide selection on that one. We're just going to keep this one right here. And we're going to work on this guy. So first thing I'm going to do is convert it to an editable poly. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, uh, I'm going to go to the material editor actually. I'm going to bring this guy out and I'm going to assign it to selection. Okay. Now right now the uh, material is assigned and it actually doesn't look too bad. We're not going to have to sit here and UV map this. So let me actually take this guy and rotate him like this. All right. So now it looks like the other one. So right now this is a flat object which uh, looks decent from a good distance away. The texture makes it look good, but once you get close, it doesn't look too good. So if you want to add some depth to this, we can use a similar uh, technique that we've seen before. Uh, let me go to a left view, and you can see this is going to happen. So let me actually rotate this guy 180 degrees this way. Now we can actually see what it is that, uh, that we're doing. So basically what I'm going to do here is real simple. I'm going to use the cut tool, and I'm going to chip in geometry. Now, I don't want to chip in all the geometry. Only use this technique if you're going to be creating something important that the player comes uh, in close contact with. So something pretty close to the player would be something you would use this for. For background objects that are really far away and the player never gets close to, don't waste triangles doing this. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to decide to chip in some of the detail on some of this stuff. So for example, this big crack right here that you see, uh, this other big one over here, um, a lot of these big ones, I'm going to go ahead and start to cut some of this geometry into. So let me use the cut tool real quick. I'm going to go ahead and get some of this done. So you don't have to be totally perfect with um, how you trace over this. You do want to make sure you get plenty of this stuff traced out. So just try to follow it as best you can. Uh, it doesn't have to follow it totally exactly. In fact, it's better if it doesn't because if you try to follow it too closely you're going to end up with something that's way too high res. These little cracks, I'm not going to bother wasting geometry on that stuff. I just don't think it's worth it. Um, so this looks pretty pretty good. Probably just end my um, my cut tool right there. I think that is going to work out just fine. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these edges here, see if I can get the loop and it's actually not going to grab the, uh, the entire loop. That's fine. I'm going to take these polygons that are right here, and I'm going to select the edges by control clicking on the edge right there. I'm going to deselect that edge and that edge. So basically, I just want these edges right here selected. And what we can do is with these uh, edges selected here, we can bevel some of this stuff out. Now, first, I'm going to turn on preserved UVs. Um, again, this kind of helps in some situations, but it's not a perfect tool. Uh, at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit chamfer. I'm going to go to the options. And you can see it's going to distort a lot of this stuff, so let me reduce the amount of chamfer down. And it's going to end up doing something like this. And you could add extra subdivisions. I'm going to add maybe one subdivision in there and just chamfer this out like that, uh, which is going to work out pretty good right here. It might be a little bit too much, so let me reduce the amount of chamfer. Really, this depends on you and you know what you're trying to achieve. So I'm going to leave it like that and hit OK. All right. So do the same thing to these other big cracks. I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to get that done using the same exact technique. Uh, use the cut tool. Trace that stuff out pretty close, but not too close or else you're going to make this uh, more high res than it needs to be. And uh, then we'll meet up and go from there.
Okay, so I took a few minutes. Um, I went ahead and I worked on these different areas. So you can see here, for example, I have this area. Over here, I've got this area. Obviously, this area that we did at first. Um, and then I have this area over here. Uh, I didn't go all the way through and do this entire crack. I just thought I'd end up wasting too much geometry on that. And now what you can do is pretty simple. Uh, before I do anything though, you'll notice that my UVs did get distorted and messed up even though I had the preserved UVs option on, um, which kind of stinks, but that's okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to modifiers real quick, get myself an unwrapped UVW. I'm going to take all the faces and I'm going to give this a planar projection and go for best align. And when I do that, it's going to fix up the UVs. It gets projected back to the original way that it was before, and uh, that should do it. I'm going to collapse the modifier stack real quick. Um, at this point, let me go back to the perspective view here. It's still flat, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of these polys in here. So I'm going to take this poly, this one, and that one, for example. And what I could do is pretty simple. I'm going to grow my selection one time. And I'm simply going to take these polys and just push them in a little bit. Then I'm going to shrink the selection. And I'm going to push these in further. So I end up with this kind of nice beveled sort of look to this. So the geometry looks like it's been chipped into. And you can see how the geometry is pushed into the object. And basically it's the same thing. Just take the rest of these polys, for example, these over here. Grow the selection. Move these in a bit shrink the selection one time and then push these in a little bit more and uh, that'll do it that's pretty much it so all you need to do is do that for the rest of these and you'll create this very nice look like this object has some cracks to it and stuff like that it just looks fantastic it looks uh, much more believable now you can see the normals are a little bit messed up it's not looking too great so I could take all the uh, polygons and we can go over here to polys and do maybe an auto smooth and that works pretty good for the most part but doesn't work that great for everything else might want to do something maybe take this uh, lower it to 30 degrees do an auto smooth there and that actually works out pretty good like that okay so let me take away the um, wireframe there and there you can see how this object looks like it's been chipped into okay so it's a lot better than just using a texture so this uses a combination of uh, high res nice detail texture and some modeling detail to complete the look of a damaged broken down wall. All right, so uh, save this out. I'm going to end up end this uh, video here. We're done with this. Uh, next, we're going to start looking at high resolution sculpting.